Hello and welcome again to a new session of Azure Support Academy. In this new chapter 15, I would like to share with you an example of which, which is the impact using connection pooling or not. As most probably you know, connection pooling is a pool of connections. By default, it's around 100 that it's acting as a connection cache for your application. By default, uh, connection pooling is enabled every application using .NET, and any application will have at least one connection pooling per application plus connection stream. My name is Jose Manuel Jurado. I am a Support Escalation Engineer in SQL Azure, subject matter in this technology and speaker on different events. And let's get started with the example. I have one application here. Uh, this application will call this, uh, this class uh, uh, connection pooling. The first uh, uh, execution will be to run one uh, 9,000 connections without using pooling. Another one will be again 9,000 connections uh, using pooling connection. So let's go to start. So, as you can see, we are going to, to run without using pooling. The connection will not have right now connection pooling. This connection pooling we are going to explain before, we are going to run around 9,000 um, uh, connections. Uh, we are going to run uh, some specific query, just only two times we are running this uh, we, run, we are going to run at this statement just only to reproduce on a special workload. Let's try to do it. As you can see, this is the number of connections that we have. It's uh, 100, 200. This is the speed that when we are not using a connection, uh, connection pool. As you can see, sometimes we will see some spike, some delay or some uh, delays when you are connecting. So uh, let me show you one example about uh, the first uh, the first issue that we had. I'm going to run the next stat, uh, and I'm going to set this uh, this information important stats. Okay, that takes file. As uh, you can see. Uh, this is the behavior when we are not using connection pooling. We are opening a new port for each connection that we have. As uh, we explained in chapter uh, 13, if I remember well, uh, we have two connections. Uh, for each attempt that you try to connect to your SQL, SQL Azure database, you are going to use two. One of them with the port 1433 will be uh, the proxy port, and another one will be the, the, tenant, uh, the tenant ring or the server that uh, your database is running. This IP, this IP is my local machine, and this is the difference port that we're using. If your application is not managing correctly the error or it's not closing correctly in the, in the, the connections, you could have one uh, issue that is the name is exhausted ephemeral port because you're getting the maximum number of connections at the same time open or in time wait. So time wait means that it's a special status uh, from uh, TCP. That means that it's waiting for some time to receive the last uh, conversation, last, uh, last information uh, from the server uh, using the TCP. So right now it's uh, we are waiting to to to, uh, to to finish this process, but as you can see, we have too many 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 more than we are using. Okay, so let me stop the application. I'm going to 
going to run again and start. Going to repeat again, but right now we are uh, we we are waiting for uh, to close this uh, all the code that we have. Let's try to have all the code closed. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are waiting some seconds or more because even uh, even when application uh, was closed or was finished. Um, uh, still, uh, this port is waiting for some communication, some some information to the TCP port. Um, okay, we don't have any right now. Okay, let's go to change the code, and we are going to use a connection poly. We are going to start here. Remember that we have some parameters about the number of uh, number of uh, the number of connection that we that we use right now. As an example, for example, uh, we have 400 here, and uh, to use the pooling, you need to specify the pooling equal screw where you want to use. Remember that uh, connection pooling is enabled by default. We run application. As you can see, it's much faster. The connections. So if we run again, the same that can start. As you can see, we are going just only at least two because we are reusing the connection. It's time that we close the connection. We open the connection, close the connection, open the connection, close the connection that we have in this code. As you can see. It's time we are opening the connection using our retry logic policy. Uh, we close the connection. So for the reasons, it's very important re to remember that close the connection, we open the connection by using connection pooling. We're going to run again. Let us start as well for checking the details. That the process is finished because we don't have any for here. We are going to run again the same to check if we have any other ports, but we are going to just only see one port open. We don't have right now anything, so it's very fast. Okay, so the process has been completed. Uh, we have just only one minute. As you can see, it's uh, it's faster that if you compare with uh, with a connection with without using the connection, connection pooling. That's all. Okay, so we demonstrated that. Uh, we show you what is the impact of the connection pooling. Remember to use this one, but if you need more information or you have any question, please uh, send a mail to uh, this address, jncurado at microsoft.com. And if you need more information, please review this URL that you have all this information with more details, with information about connection pooling. So thank you so much for attending this session. Um, I will see you in the next chapter. Thank you so much. Bye.